What is up people? Today I want to give you guys a basic understanding of docker containers, what they are, how they fundamentally work so you can unleash them in your development workflow. So let's go. Now I've had to make myself a little bit smaller because I'm going to need all the screen size. So let's take a look at a very basic computer. Right, we have hardware, we've got 8 gigs of RAM, 4 cores of CPU, and on top of that we have an operating system. Now operating system has a kernel, and we have a file system on top of that. So that's quite self-explanatory, it's a file system. Normally an operating system comes with a lot of libraries, so Ubuntu for example is packaged with library, and then you have different Linux distributions that might have slightly less libraries that are uh, slimmed down. Now I'm going to take a, a traditional process i'm going to use chrome as an example the browser and i'm going to explain to you guys what a traditional system looks like versus a container so let's say i sudo apt-get install chrome or yum or whatever your package manager is and what will happen is chrome will install any dependencies and libraries that it needs so they'll come into the file system and what will happen when we start it up we'll get a process pids one two three so that's a process id um, that the the operating system will assign to that process and what will happen is um, the the process will basically have access to the libraries and it will start up and do a bunch of things now it's important to note that in linux operating system everything is a file even the devices like um, you can see here like tmp x11 that is for the gui so when a process starts up and it needs a user interface it's going to look on the file system and grab that and then it's going to use a display environment variable to bind to a display and then it also uses like let's say for sound for like youtube sound or let's say you have a video conference um, in the browser so it'll use these files and then any other files on the file system now you can see um, here we have a lot of dependencies and files littered all over the place and that is the beauty of docker so when we look at a container we can isolate all these things in one container image now i'm going to show you what a docker container looks like so if we install docker um, it's a process just like every other process on the host um, this is the docker daemon and it's running pid124 and it's just a process so any docker command we run will be sent to this process and then it'll do all the magic now what i'm about to to show you guys um hold your breath um, it is a massive docker run command it's probably the most complex one that you'll see in a very long time but if you master this command and understand every line you will become literally uh, a wizard so we have docker run dash d now dash d means background mode you can have it running in the background background process or you can run it as it which is interactive now we're going to run chrome as background mode because we want to run all our processes in background mode we're not interested in like seeing them in the terminal then we also do dash dash rm and this here is to remove the container once we exit the process so if i close the browser i don't want any garbage on my host afterward now pause there for a second before we get to the next line I'm going to show you guys now what happens when we do docker run what does docker do every docker image is a virtual file system and it's defined by a docker file so the docker file that you write where you declaratively state what you want in the container image that is what becomes the virtual file system so if we take a look at this container image when in our docker file we had to describe every dependency in that docker file so it would match exactly the dependencies that we would normally have over here the only difference is it would be in the docker file because this is what the process would have access to so when we start up every docker file has a command or an entry point at the bottom of the docker file which tells docker what process to run and in our case it would be slash usr slash bin slash chrome or whatever binary it is and docker will run that process now in our case it started process id 1 now if you run 10 20 30 containers on a machine every single container will be pid 1 inside the container so you can see it has a little box around it that means it cannot see other processes on the host now interestingly we look at the next line pid host what happens when i say pid host if i enable that line look what happens 
all of a sudden our process now becomes a host process so it will get PID one to five so to get a an id like every other process and it will now be able to see other processes on the host so this is good if you're running like top or htop in a container and you want to host visualization you want to be able to see other processes like a monitoring tool then you would use PID host. Now, the next thing we see here is CPUs and memory limit. Now, the Linux kernel has a concept called C group and namespaces. Now, that basically controls what a process can see and use. And this extends far beyond just CPU and memory. You can control processes in every aspect. And what Docker does when we send this instruction is it sends a C group instruction to the kernel and creates and sets up all these C groups and that will basically send that down and now our process will only be able to see two cores and one gig of ram now if you're running in like a container orchestrator like kubernetes the the linux kernel on that box will actually terminate the container if it exceeds um, the one gig of ram that we assign to it here now the last couple of things that are remaining all these dash v's are basically volumes now as I said earlier, if, if this process starts up right now, it'll probably crash because the first thing it's going to do is going to look for an X11 um, GUI to mount to. And because there's nothing in the virtual file system, um, we would need to define a volume for it. So that's why we have dash V um, TMP X11 here. And also because I run like Outlook and like Gmail in the browser, I want my calendar times to be correct. So I mount the system clock into the container because I don't want to run UC, UTC time inside the container. Now, looks what, look what happens when I run that, the dash V option creates a mount point to all these different things that I want to mount in. Um, that includes devices. So you can see I can play YouTube videos in this Chrome browser because I have device, dev S and D mounted in. I also can do a rendering device and I also have dash E. Dash E is environment variable. So we pass in the display variable and that'll give us the display which to bind to. And there you have it. So this is a quick overview to give you guys an idea exactly what a container looks like versus a native process. And you can see there's not much overhead between, between the two. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if um, what you guys wanna see in the next one. Peace. You get the bag and fumble it. I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. Straight off the lot, 300 cash. And the car came with a blood in it.